and I thought for sure I turned it on. It is on. Okay. You'll stand together as we sing number 340, Give Him the Glory. It was down at the feet of Jesus, oh, the happy, happy day, that my soul found peace in believing, and my sins were washed away. Let me tell the old, old story of his grace so full and free. Let my heart keep giving him the glory for his wondrous love to me. It was down at the feet of Jesus where I brought my guilt and sin that he paid my debt and forgave me for he died my soul to win let me tell the old old story of his grace so full and free let my heart keep giving him the glory for his wondrous love to me number 230 down at the cross where my savior died glory to his name Number 230. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, glory to his name. Glory to his name, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy soul at the Savior's feet, plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name, glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Well, amen. Thank you for being here in our services this evening. It is good to see you, uh, and I hope that you've had a good day. Uh, and I hope that it will be a good night for you, too, uh, as we go in through this week. Uh, so good to see you this evening. And uh, Mr. Ron Young, will you open us in prayer, please, sir? perfect wisdom of our God revealed in all the universe all things created by his hand and held together at his command he knows the mysteries of the seas the secrets of the stars are his he guides the planets on their way and turns the earth through another day. The matchless wisdom of his ways did mark the path of righteousness. His word a lamp unto my feet his spirit teaching and guiding me and all oh, the mystery of the cross that god should suffer for the lost 
so that the fool might shame the wise, and all the glory might go to Christ. Oh, grant me wisdom from above to pray for peace and cling to love and teach me humbly to receive the sun and rain of your sovereignty. Each strand of sorrow has a place within this tapestry of grace. So through the trials I choose to say your perfect will in your perfect way. Each strand of sorrow has a place within this tapestry of grace. So through the trials I choose to say your perfect will in your perfect way. Folks, if you'll take your hymn book, turn to number 150, My Wonderful Lord, My Wonderful Lord, by Seraphs and Angels of Heaven Adored. <clears throat> number 150, as we stand together and sing, My Wonderful Lord. My wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, by angels and seraphs in heaven adored. I know thou art mine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. My wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, by angels and seraphs in heaven adored. I know thou art mine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. Amen. As we receive our offering tonight, I just want to let you know of a couple of prayer requests uh, that uh, answers to prayer and uh, continued prayer requests that we're doing. Uh, Cheryl Sarig had her surgery yesterday for the blockage in her artery. Uh, and the surgery lasted a little bit longer than they were having trouble uh, controlling her blood pressure. And so she went into uh, ICU uh, last night so that they could control that uh, and then talked to her today, very bright and cheery and was hopeful she'd get out of there. And then I got a text on my way uh, home this afternoon that she's going home. Uh, so uh, she's doing well, apparently. Uh, and so that's an answer to prayer there uh, for her. Uh, remember George Joseph in prayer, got to see them on Monday and just visit with them for a little bit. Uh, he was coherent and uh, had, had drank some that day and, and ate a little bit and was in good spirits. And uh, when, when, when believers go through trials that are great with grace, it is a wonderful and great testimony. And uh, it was a great blessing to me to be able to see that. Uh, and so uh, just continue to pray for George uh, and Christine and uh, Peyton. Uh, the family there. Several unspoken requests that uh, just need to pray for. Pray for one another, if you would. Uh, and uh, some people are sick. Got a couple who are traveling right now. Uh, and so just safety for all there. So let's go, Lord, in prayer. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done in Cheryl's life, bringing her through her surgery and successful that she is now home. We thank you for George and his testimony there. And the cancer that he's going through has, has been a a witness to others, and I, I thank you for the, their testimony. I ask you to give them strength and comfort and uh, ease of pain be with Christine and help her uh, through this very trying time, and, and Peyton as well at home. Uh, we ask you to be with the other requests that uh, we have not mentioned tonight, but they are great and they uh, are, are uh, abundant, and I ask that you would meet each need that you know about, Lord, that you uh, will answer and are working, and we're thankful that your plan and purpose will be going forward in these people's lives, but I ask that you'd help them uh, in these things. Some traveling, give them safety there. Some sick and could not be here tonight, please heal them. Our subject tonight, as we talk about things and we get into a little mini-series on this, I ask that you give us wisdom, discernment, uh, and just the ability to look honestly within ourselves 
to see where we shape up according to your word and, and help us to get in line with you. Uh, we ask that you'd use the gift and the giver with the, the offering tonight that we might be able to reach more people for you and have a bigger impact in this community. Help us, Lord, in these things, and we ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Miss Elwanger, for playing that. Uh, is that called Adoring Him? What's the name of that song? Do you remember? My Jesus Fair. Okay, uh, I want to listen to that on the way home. Uh, I, I love that song. Uh, with that, uh, the end of it is Abhorring All My Sin, Adoring Only Him. Uh, and uh, it's just a wonderful song. Uh, and I just got the title wrong. So, Ephesians 5, let's go there. Uh, we're going to be here for the next couple of weeks uh, in Ephesians 5. I'm starting a little mini-series within our home improvement series uh, in dealing with the topic of exposing and taming uh, the dangers of media. Uh, and we will cover a lot of different medias tonight. Uh, we will deal with a lot of social media type stuff tonight. We'll deal with some things uh, that are uh, video game related, that type thing. But media is everywhere. Uh, and uh, I realized that tonight I was thinking, okay, what... How many devices do I have? I've got a cell phone, I've got a smartwatch, I've got an iPad, and I've got a laptop, and I've got a desktop. I'm pretty connected. It's crazy uh, to, to think about uh, how many devices uh, just I personally have uh, to, to work on different things. Uh, and we are a very connected society. And so we're going to spend the next two weeks, I believe, on this. It depends on how far we get tonight. It may be three weeks. We'll see uh, on it. Um, but I want to cover it adequately uh, and thoroughly so that uh, we get a picture of the danger of it uh, and then try to figure out how do we tame it uh, because it really is a monster uh, and one that um, we need to be aware of uh, on things. Some things coming up. I want to let you know before we get started. Uh, this Sunday, we're going to have an offering that we're going to take for the Joseph family. And so this is just a love offering. We'll take it at the end of the morning service. We'll have a regular offering at the end of the morning service. We'll have a second offering that will go strictly to them. If you'd like to give to them, uh, you can just write a check to the church, put their name in the memo line. If you'd like to give cash, that's fine as well. Uh, but we'd like, I'd like to be a blessing to them uh, just because I know the ambulance ride on the way back over from Tampa, they, she, it's not covered by insurance. And so over a thousand dollars I know that went just to an ambulance ride uh, and uh, they're just they're just different things that uh, come up and in, in there he hasn't been able to work and uh, we need to be a blessing uh, as a church family and so uh, I encourage you to pray about it and on Sunday we'll take an offering for them 
This Saturday is our ladies brunch and we have, I believe last count we got, and I don't think everyone has signed up on it. Uh, I think we were at 85 ladies right now uh, who are planning to attend. And I believe that there are more who are going to be coming to it. Uh, we've got people who are bringing two and three guests with them. And it's wonderful. And so if you haven't signed up, the sign-up sheets are still out. That'll just help us get a more accurate count if you're planning on attending and haven't done that. If you at the last minute say, I'm bringing two more, is that okay? Yes, it's okay. We'll, have, we'll be set up for it. And I encourage all ladies that can attend to attend it you got a daughter or a niece or somebody you pick up on the side of the road that's 10 years old and older wants to come, uh, then, then bring them. It's going to be a great time of fellowship. We've got some games planned, some prizes. Uh, there'll be a special message that goes along with it, and it'll be just a great time of, of fun uh, for us. This morning, this Saturday morning, 1030 is when we'll start, and we'll go to 12 o'clock or so. Uh, but uh, the list of food that's that's going to be there and what we've purchased and what's being made, um, kind of jealous, uh, just to say just a little bit, it, it does sound very, uh, very appetizing for that. So that'll be this Saturday morning. Visitation will be the next Saturday on the 27th. Uh, we'll come, we'll do some house-to-house -house visitation, we'll do prospect visitation uh, on that uh, day on the 27th. That'll start at nine o'clock and we'll have breakfast for you and then we'll go out uh, on that. We had, we're supposed to have a youth activity tonight and that got rescheduled uh, and that will be two weeks from tonight. There will be a teen cookout from 5 to 8, May the 1st. Uh, that will be the teen cookout. And then just a month later on that, just to put a bug in your ear on this, the Young Adult Conference for 18 to 30 year olds uh, down at Beacon Baptist. That will be on June the 1st. Pastor Shetler will be there and it will be a great time. There's no cost to it, but we do have to register. So we'll let you know how we'll do that coming up shortly okay so that's what's coming up uh, and uh, we're planning vbs we're going to do it in the evenings uh, this summer uh, for a week and so it'll be from six to eight o'clock we'll be providing some dinner and some things like that for for people if you'd like to get involved i'm sure within two weeks the sign-up sheet's going to go out uh, on that it will be in the middle of july so uh, but it will be out I, I guarantee you after this brunch is over and visitation's over. So uh, Brother Case is already chomping at the bit for it. So if you'd like to help on that, uh, we'll do that in July. Teen camp coming in July as well. Lots of stuff. Let's stop talking about that. Let's go to Ephesians 5. Uh, and let's talk about the exposing the dangers of media. I read on Harvard uh, Business uh, website yesterday that social media itself is an $11 billion industry for just things that are sold uh, based on marketing to those that are under the age of 18. That it generates $11 billion uh, worth of market share uh, and income, not income, but uh, just spending uh, throughout the year. Uh, and so I decided I'm gonna look up some statistics and see some things about uh, different areas when it comes not only to social media, but cell phones and and such that are on children, uh, that children have today. Uh, I looked up the top social media websites, the top uh, things that are there. Facebook has 3.06 billion users worldwide uh, on that. Those are active users that are, uh, or at least registered. Uh, that generates about 17 uh, billion, 500 million visits to their site, whether by members or from other sites to get to them every month. Um, WhatsApp was 2.78 billion people. Again, 3 billion uh, of those going to their website. YouTube has 2.7 billion people. And get this, it generates 106 billion views based on just, you don't even have to be a YouTube user, it just sends it to it. Now we're broadcasting tonight across YouTube and we will be responsible for about 40 of those views uh, on that. So, uh, but there's 106 billion uh, views on that. Uh, Instagram has 2.35 billion, TikTok has 1.67 billion, WeChat again 1.67 and the numbers go down from there but those are some of the top ones. Uh, that are, are there, I think uh, Snapchat, which is a popular one amongst young people, I think was number nine on the list as it went down uh, further and further the list. The typical teenager spends, according to this statistic from 2014, okay, so this is a 10-year-old statistic, 
that the, uh, the average teenager will spend 11 and a half hours on a device or connected to media somehow interacting with it per day. That's a chunk of time. Uh, I, I looked up some statistics, you know, let's get new within that, let's see. They said 4.5 hours of that time, uh, and they were saying somewhere in the neighborhood of nine hours, four and a half hours of that are spent on some kind of social media site. 78% of young people ages 12 through 17 have their own cell phone. By age 11, 53% of children have a cell phone and 31% of eight-year-olds have their own cell phone. 92% of teens go online on a regular basis, including 24% that said they are online constantly. We know we're online constantly when the TV commercials have now figured out we need to put a QR code on our television screens so that the cell phone that's either in your hand while you're watching television or sitting next to you that you can pick it up and you can scan their television screen to go to a website on your phone to get to their car or to order food from DoorDash uh, or whatnot. Uh, there's a whole DoorDash commercial that literally just has a QR code and a guy just pushing something across the screen. The whole idea is sit on your couch, watch television with your phone in your hand, scan this, order food to your house so you don't have to move. Uh, and I thought, well, there's a lazy society uh, on some things. Uh, and, and so they know we're online. They know we're connected. So when I talk about young people tonight, I'm really talking to us uh, because many times we're just as big of users of these things as our young people are. <clears throat> many of these websites uh, and many of these social media platforms are going to what they call short-term uh, video content. That videos are 90 seconds or less. That YouTube calls them shorts. Instagram and Facebook call them reels. Uh, TikTok, I don't know what they call them there uh, on that, or, or tweets or whatever, that these videos are 90 seconds or less, and they have figured out that you won't even spend the 90 seconds before you go on to the next one. If you go back just to my childhood, which is not that long ago, I guess, uh, but it is a good 30 years uh, back, Television programs, cartoons, were half-hour programs. And you factor in commercials, you're looking at about a 22 to 23-minute episode of a cartoon. <coughs> Fast forward a generation, uh, and now they are broken up into, instead of 24-minute episodes, they're broken up into two 12-minute episodes because they figured out attention span has shrunk. They went from 12-minute episodes to seven-minute episodes that now they do three seven-minute shorter episodes because the attention span has once again shrunk. We went from seven-minute episodes to shorts and uh, many episodes of two to three minutes and many children will sit and digest an entire season in one sitting because all of the episodes are two to three minutes. And we wonder why our classrooms we can't hold their attention. Okay. Uh, their attention span has been trained to be 90 seconds or less. And for many of you adults who sit at home at night after everything else is done in the home and you just scroll through reels after reel after reel or video after video after video, they've hooked you to. Okay. And our attention span goes from one thing to the next. And why do we have road rage? You didn't go fast enough, okay? Uh, you know, whatever it is. Uh, and our, we have been trained to want instant gratification. We've been trained to want the dopamine hit that it gives our brain, that quick fix to where children spend hours on it, not knowing they've spent hours. Have you ever, as an adult, gone down a rabbit hole that you didn't intend to go down? Uh, I, I know I did the other night. 
I, I did not intend to watch 92 videos. I didn't watch 92 uh, videos, but I, I will tell you I watched more than I, I probably should have. It wasn't bad content, but it was surely a waste of time uh, that I didn't need to waste of time. Uh, you ever gone to your internet web browser and then got off track? and wondered, what was I doing on here in the first place? And it's all quick hits, quick movement from one to the next to get us focused, marketed to, to buy a product, to get us entertained, to get our mind off of whatever the problems of the day are. We almost use it as a drug to get us away from our problems or feelings of hurt. And when I say that, I'm not talking about an isolated group of people. I'm talking about it being mass produced in the lives of many Americans today. Toddlers and preschoolers use of the internet of children zero to five who use the internet, 80% of them will use it at least once a week. <clears throat> In today's world, young people do need to learn how to function with technology because they cannot avoid it, and we know we cannot avoid it uh, in our society today. But not to the detriment of learning social skills or basic living skills. The unbridled use of technology has, to a large extent, actually been more harmful to children than helpful. Because they don't learn how to do things, they learn how to watch other people do things. And so it is a detriment to our society. Uh, there are some famous artists who have taken some dis depictions of people who miss their life's mate because they're walking down the street with their head in their phone. Uh, the, the, the picture I posted, uh, on I, I was having fun with this. I was advertising on social media about social media uh, for things uh, about our, our series of messages uh, because we've got to get the message out. And, and please don't get, the, don't get me wrong on this because I do want to get this across. Social media in and of itself is not bad. It's a tool. How we use it becomes a problem. Or how we use it becomes a help. Okay? And, and we'll discuss some of that as we look at this. Uh, be, because I don't agree with the people behind them. Uh, I don't agree with their philosophy, their politics. Uh, it, hardly any of it would I ever agree with them on anything, probably. But it is the world that we live in on things. Uh, let me give you some, some examples of some people who you, you'll recognize at least one of the names uh, on this, and I'll describe who they are for some of the others. The first one is Steve Jobs. Ever heard of him? Steve Jobs, founder of Apple, creator of the iPhone, the iPad, limited the technology that his kids partook in. In fact, when the iPads came out, and uh, they're probably only actually a little over a decade old uh, with the iPads, that his children had never seen one or used one. There was an article that was written about him, a biographer that said this, every evening, Steve made a point of having dinner at the big long table in their kitchen, discussing books and history and a variety of things. He said, no one ever pulled out an iPad or computer. The kids did not even seem to be ad addicted at all to their devices. And he was very staunch that technology not take over his children. Chris Anderson is the former editor of Wired Magazine. He's the chief executive of 3D Robotics, which makes drones. He said, my kids accuse me and my wife of being fascist and overly concerned about technology. They say that none of their friends have the same rules. He said, of his five, uh, he said of his five children, six to 17, that's because we have seen the dangers of technology firsthand. I've seen it in myself, and I don't want that to happen to my kids, he said. Alex Constant Constantinople, the chief executive of Outcast Agency, this is a tech agency focused on communications and marketing, said her youngest son, 
who is five, is never allowed to use gadgets during the week. And her older children that are 10 to 13 are allowed only 30 minutes a day on school nights. Evan Williams, the founder of Blogger, he's a co-founder of Twitter, Medium, his wife, Sarah, they said that in lieu of iPads, their two young boys have hundreds of books. Yes, literal books, physical books. And they can pick up and read it anytime. Now, when the CEOs of a given field want to protect their children from their own occupation, they might be on to something. Not all technology is wrong, at least in moderation. There are good and healthy uses for it. But children in today's world are certainly not going to grow up without technology. It's here forever to stay. Children learning to use technology and social media while under the supervision of their parents rather than feeling it out for themselves as young adults or worse, using it in secret disobedience as children or teenagers. There's probably a time with your guidance, they're going to need your help. To navigate it alone is not wise. Why do you say that? Well, some more statistics for you. 32% of 11-year-olds and 55% of all 12-year-olds already have a Facebook account. Now, the minimum age limit that you need to have a Facebook account, just signed by Governor DeSantis in our Florida, uh, is 14. And that 15 and 16-year-olds, according to this new bill he signed in March of uh, 2024, that they have to have parental consent in order to have an account. Have you ever signed up for one of these accounts? All you have to do is put in an age, and they don't verify that at all. According to this bill that he had, that websites that produce and promote pornographic material and inappropriate material for children have to use an age verification system. You ever seen one of those age verification systems? Just put in any birthday before the date and you're fine. The access to it, the secrecy of it, we'll talk about that, is the problem. Not necessarily age verification. And I appreciate our governor wanting to stand up for parents and wanting to stand up for children and wanting them to not have access to it when they're 7 or 8 or 9 or 10 years old. In the UK, 93% of people are on social media. Of 11 and 12 year olds in the United Kingdom, 86% already have it. In our age today, 11 and 12 year olds in the United States, 47% of our 11 and 12 year olds are on TikTok, and 31% of them are on Snapchat. I found this out recently. I didn't know this, uh, but there are two versions of TikTok I've heard. One that China produces for the Chinese people and one that China produces for our young people. read an article that talked about when they asked different people in China, the children, what they wanted to be when they grew up. Astronauts, doctors, firefighters. Because the TikTok that they have is educational. They control the media, they control uh, what's allowed on it, and it's an educational system. The TikTok in America, you can learn how to dance. You can learn a lot of things I get. I don't have TikTok uh, on stuff, but uh, the TikTok that we have in America, uh, there are people wanting to ban it over privacy issues and stealing of information and, and things like that. You ask the children today what they want to be in our society. I want to be a YouTuber. Uh, I, I want to be a social media influencer. I want to be, and the list was so different night and day because our children are consuming and what they see they want to become. And so we must be very careful with this. 75% of online teens have profiles on social networking sites. 
47% of online teens from 12 to 17 have uploaded photos of themselves. 14% of these teens have posted videos online of themselves. 53% of teens have posted provocative or inappropriate photos and their information online. 35% posted content about themselves drinking or doing drugs. 29% showed poor communication skills. 26 made discriminatory, dis, they discriminated online. Uh, I can't say the word, but they made comments towards those things. 15% of them have experienced online harassment. And I will tell you, those statistics are seven or eight years old. And we know this, there's an axiom out there that says every one and a half years, the memory required to store something will shrink by half in size and will double in memory. In other words, you can put a ton of memory in a small space. Uh, my cell phone that's here has 256 gigabytes on it. 256 gigabytes, my first computer when I was 12 or 10 or 11 had 64 megabytes and that was the entire computer. And some of you, I'm talking a foreign language, that's okay uh, on that. But it, let's just go, that was tiny and what I have on a phone is massive. Your phone has replaced how many different things that you don't have to carry anymore? A recorder uh, for audio or video, a calculator, a tape measure, a level on my phone. I know I've got a level on it. I don't even pull out a level anymore. I literally stick my phone on something and see if it's level. Uh, and I'm going... How weird is this? I wonder how accurate this is in the first place. Anyway, uh, th there are so many things that our phones can do for us. I don't even need a stud finder anymore. I can't even make the dad joke about finding a stud finder with my stud finder because I can do it with my phone uh, and see the studs behind the walls. Okay. And, and so we're putting this into the hands of... Some of you didn't get that joke. That's okay. You're tired tonight or something. Uh, but... Um, or have never, okay, husbands here, if you haven't played that, you need, that's a joke for you. I'm, I'm handing gold to you right now, okay, uh, on something. But uh, anyway, uh, when it comes down to our teenagers, can they make discernible choices when it comes to what they're facing in these different areas? Let me read an article. I'm just going to read part of the article to you, but this is called Teen Behavior, Problem Solving, and decision making. It says many parents do not understand why their teenagers occasionally behave in an impulsive, irrational, and da or dangerous way. I, I teach an 11th and 12th grade Bible every other year about gray matter, how the brain is literally remaking itself during the teen years. And they, they say if you take that and you add alcohol to it, the damage that it does to a teenager and the discernment and the slow decision making. Why do children stumble over their feet while going through puberty and adolescence changes? Why does all that happen? Because the brain is literally remaking itself into something else. So we call it gray matter uh, on that. But many parents don't understand why their teenagers occasionally behave in an impulsive, irrational, or dangerous way. At times, it seems like teens don't think things through or fully consider the consequences of their actions. Adolescents differ from adults in the way they behave, solve problems, and make decisions. There is a biological explanation for this difference. Studies have shown that brains continue to mature and develop throughout childhood and adolescence and well into early adulthood. Scientists have identified a specific region of the brain called the amyg amygdala. I don't know that I'm saying that right, but it's responsible for immediate reactions, including fear and aggressive behavior. This region develops early. However, the frontal cortex, the area of the brain that controls reasoning or helps us think before we act, develops later. This part of the brain is still changing and maturing well into adulthood. Other changes in the brain during adolescence include a rapid increase in the connections between the brain cells and, and making the brain pathways more effective. Nerve cells develop myelin, an insulating layer that helps cells communicate. All these changes are essential for the development of coordinated thought, action, and behavior. So the next time you want to call your teenager brain dead, you're right, uh, they are. 
because they, of the changing. And yet we are using these formative years to say, here you go, you're on your own. And we don't say that out loud, but the disengagement that we have as parents to children in this area and matter of saying, entertain yourself while I do such and such is a dangerous way. And we're all guilty of it. Been to a restaurant lately? You probably have something sitting on your table that's going to entertain your children while they're there. Games only cost $1.99 okay, or whatever it is. And you don't have to hear your children at the table so you as adults can talk. It's just another step in these things. And, and we're all guilty of it. I'm not saying that my children have not played those things. I'm not saying my children have not been on devices and, and, and been in other areas and those things. We all can work on this. And if not for our children's sake, for our own sakes, uh, how much of the time do we waste on different matters just on a device in our pocket or a screen uh, in our homes? So if this is all true, how can Christian parents, many of whom feel they are increasingly falling behind in what their kids can do with media or know about media, many of them who are addicted to technology themselves, how can we help our children understand and then not only understand the danger, but then control and tame the monster that is media? In this lesson, the next, probably a third because we're not where I need to be uh, on this, um, we're going to look at some principles from Ephesians 5 that I think if we apply them will help expose the media and try to tame it to where it doesn't control our families. The Parenting Uncovered podcast said this, you should give your child social media at whatever age you want their childhood to end. And I believe they're right. Understand as well that children grow up surrounded by technology. They grow up surrounded by televisions, smartphones, tablets, computers. It's not simply enough to just give them rules about how things should happen. You should have rules. And we'll help you define some of those if you don't have any, or maybe you can help another person if you've got something that works for your family. They do need parental boundaries established by rules. They need principles that will help them make wise decisions. So we're in Ephesians chapter 5, and we've spent 20 minutes to get to this. Okay. Look at verse 8, if you would. It says in verse 8, For we were sometimes, for ye plural, were sometimes darkness. But now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. We must teach our children that their identity is not in their social media account. Their identity is not in who likes or puts a thumb up electronically on their picture, video, how many shared it, how many followers, how many comments, reactions, that their identity is not found in those things, but is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you go backwards in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1, go with me real quickly. Uh, not part of the message, but it just popped in my brain, so we're going to say it. That's always a dangerous thing, by the way. Uh, but it says this in Ephesians 1, verse 6, To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted, in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Now, who is He? Who is His? You go back to verse 5. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. Our identity must be found in Him so that things like an account online, a comment made by by a classmate, a, a, a incident or interaction with somebody that does, says something rude or, or wrong or whatever it is, does not detour their relationship with Christ. That it doesn't derail their walk with the Lord. 
If my identity is in Christ, no one who says anything online can determine. Because my identity is not found in that. So many people's identity is found in what they create in content online. Uh, many of your children, if you don't know who this is, will know who Mr. Beast is. Okay? Uh, and some of you are shaking your heads, you know who Mr. Beast is. Okay? He, he is a person that has many channels online, many followers, millions and billions of views on his channels. He's worth some $7 billion or something like that. They did an interview with him where they sat down with him for about 45 minutes, and he lives in a, in a bubble almost, a little room, didn't have, you know, it's got a bed, it's got a desk, it's very simple. Uh, he does many things where he gives away uh, money. Uh, he's very uh, much into philanthropy and things that uh, he does very well with that and gets millions of views for it, so he's making more money in doing it uh, at the same time. Um, but they interviewed him, and I was very curious to listen to it because he's very popular with young people. He's got his own gaming channel. He's got his own, uh, he, he, he's got a dozen channels or more uh, on YouTube. And so as you look at him and watch him, uh, he, he's branched out into all kinds of things, and he'll talk about staying awake at night and not being able to sleep and being concerned with creating more content. And what's going to get the next view? And what's, what do the people want? And what are they going? And his life is consumed in this world. I, I, I think in the, the video they were talking about him having a girlfriend that I think he only sees online. Uh, that he, I don't know that he, 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 I know he's seen her in person, but she's across the world, I think, uh, in some other area. And, and it, was, it, it was sad to me that his life was consumed with an online persona that the only thing he was concerned about was what's the next video? What's the next content? What's the next thing I can do? And to me, in light of the Scriptures, that's a wasted life. And what I find is many people will waste their life knowing what he's doing next. And he's got hundreds of millions of subscribers. Uh, he's, he's a billionaire. He can do anything he wants. And yet, it's going to be vain for him in the end if he doesn't know Jesus Christ. And we will give and buy and look to what is he doing next. So he's branched out into candy. He's branched out into uh, other things. I saw one ad online. Listen to Mr. Beast read the Bible to you. And I went, no, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's just anything and everything that, that he can do completely consumed with it. And so as people are consumed and walking in that life, I believe that they walk in darkness and they don't walk in light. And so there are many things where people find their identity. I pray that you find your identity in Christ. I pray that you find your identity in his word. That walking in light and walking with the spirit and in the spirit becomes that which controls your life, not what comes on a screen. And uh, my wife and I saw something online last night, uh, on the television last night, and she said, have you ever seen a man wear a, a pearl necklace like that? And I said, yeah, I have actually. And where? Baseball players. Okay. There's several of them. You know, I'm going, I, I I think I would die before I had a pearl necklace around my neck uh, on something, uh, you know, uh, on it. And it's just, it, we get into the gender identity stuff and the mixture. I don't know exactly why or what, but it's just now it's become a fad. Uh, you know, the hairstyles and things like that come because they see it online somewhere and it becomes a fad and fads come and go. Okay. Uh, some come back. Okay. Uh, on that, I had some kids go, snapback hats are so cool. And what's, what's a snapback hat? You know, they got these little things and you, you, you snap them together and, and it goes, it's just on the back of the hat. I said, oh, I had one of those when I was eight. <laughs> no. Yeah. You know, your ten teenage ninja mutant turtles. Yeah, I had those as a kid too. You know, your transformers, they were my sheets when I was six. You know, and they, everything comes back on stuff. And, and they live their life as if this is brand new. And there ain't nothing new under the sun, I will tell you that right now, uh, on things. But they live to buy this next thing, get to this next level. And, and what they're doing is seeking for acceptance 
approval, identity, and they will go through shapes and forms and and it depends on who they're around to form their identity. If we form our identity from the Word of God in the person of Jesus Christ, I don't have to do all of those things because my identity is in Him. What if you miss out? What if you don't have those things? I'm okay. I've got the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, I know I'm saying that as a 43-year-old man. Okay. And I realize I'm not 15 anymore. Okay. Or I'm not 19 anymore. And I know the pressures of those things are massive when you're 12. Or when you're 14. Or when you're 15. I think the sooner that the parent can teach this to the child and the sooner the child can learn this for their life, the better off they will be. Uh, on that. So uh, I'm going to jump into my first point. We won't even get through it, but I think it will help us to lay a foundation for what we need to do. How are we going to, to teach our children what is acceptable unto the Lord? Number one is to prove that which is acceptable. Ephesians 5 verse 10, you look at it, it says this, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. So uh, we, we didn't read verse 9. We're going to come back to it later. Uh, on this in the the first point here. But the word translated prove refers to testing as in testing metals for genuineness. Uh, If you've got a gold chain or a gold necklace or uh, silver, you want to know whether it's true or not. If you've you've got a diamond on your ring, uh, ladies, that's there, or uh, gentlemen, if you've got it on your wedding ring or something, you want to know, is that genuine or is this a fake? And so there are ways to test it, to see, and that's what this word prove means. The acceptability uh, of uh, the criteria for uh, a a movie online is not based on its rating. Oh, well, this is PG. It's going to be okay. Okay. Uh, Have you noticed some of the movies from times past uh, are, are rated PG, and you go back and watch them, and you go, how in the world is this rated PG? Uh, you know, it was made in the 1960s or 70s, and they got innuendo all over the place. And you say, oh, that's such a great movie. You go back and watch it, you go, how in the world is this rated PG? You know, this, this, this can't be rated. How is it just, because we think PG, oh, my seven-year-old could watch that. That's what the world thinks. It's okay, just parental guidance, but if they're seven or eight, they probably got it. Okay, P- PG-13 movies, well, if you're 13 years old or older, you don't have to have a parent to go watch this movie. Okay, well, well PG-13 movies are full of all kinds of stuff and, and what they're throwing in there. And so because the, the uh, MPAA or whatever it is, the Rating Association, uh, put a rating on it, then that must be acceptable. The acceptability of our own post determined by how many of our friends give it a like or a thumbs up or a follow is not what makes it right. Our ultimate test is not statistics and there are analytics on things all over the place. Uh, I can go to our YouTube page and I can go to our analytics and I can see who was watching or how long they were watching. Uh, Here's the fun part. Average view time, okay? If you want to get a view on your YouTube page, you know how long you have to watch in order to get one view. I've got 49 people viewing this. What is it? Three seconds. If someone watches your video for three seconds, it counts as a view. We have analytics that show our services, how long are people watching, where are people watching. It's so much fun for me as a pastor to look at those because you'll watch the music and then preaching time comes on and drops off. Uh, it's, like a, it's like this cliff in the, the, the graph and I'm just going, that's encouraging uh, right there. Uh, you know, it's like 23 minutes, doom, done. Oh man, okay. Uh, you know, I know my sermon was at least 50, so I know they weren't watching it. Uh, you know, and and you, you watch those things and you look at, and all the analytics, all the statistics, everything else doesn't make it right or wrong. It, so, so we must have a standard. Well, I enjoyed it personally. It must have been okay. Doesn't necessarily mean that it is. It's whether or not it is acceptable to the Lord. I will often ask this question, could the Lord watch that and be okay with it? If Jesus was sitting here in the seat next to you and you were watching it, would he be okay watching it with you? 
or, or, and you could do that to all kinds of media, uh, media, whether it's your movies, whether it's your video games, whether it's your posts that you post online, uh, you know, whether it's uh, so, something that you're viewing, whether it's something that you're listening to. Media comes in many shapes and forms. Is it acceptable unto the Lord? And, and we need to be watchful of that. And, and just being honest, we're not real watchful of that. In, in fact, we allow a lot more than we probably should. And I'll include myself in that. And we want the Lord's power. We want the Lord's blessing. We want the Lord to answer our prayers. We want the Lord to do all kinds of things uh, in our church, in our lives, and, and all of these things. And are we proving what is acceptable unto the Lord? And your children don't know what's right or wrong until you tell them what's right or wrong. They hear a word and they repeat it. Where did you hear that word? Now here's the sad part. Oftentimes we'll say, uh, kids will say, my daddy said it. And I'm going, well, you can't repeat that word. Okay. Uh, or I saw it on a video or I saw this or that. And, and we're not proving what is acceptable because we're allowing things that we're not even thinking about to come into our homes and into our lives. So prove. Letter A under this is to test the Spirit. So test by the Holy Spirit. Uh, you can write down a reference. We're not going to look at it tonight, but 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. The things that are of God or the things that are not of God, you, you test those and, and, and try them uh, on that. Uh, there's a good standard for you. Those that say they are of God and they hear us. Those that are not of God don't hear us. And, and it's a great passage there in 1 John 4, 1 through 6. Uh, I'll, I'll give you this one. I'll read the reference uh, in the verse for you. But John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So how do we know what truth is? Well, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Holy Spirit is the truth who will guide us into all truth. So try it by the Holy Spirit. Does he allow it according to his word? Ephesians 5 verse 9 gives us three qualifications here uh, in this passage for, for what truth is uh, here. And it's a test for our walk. It says in the Ephesians 5 verse 9, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So here's a threefold test for our media, for our technology, for our daily walk, honestly, as Christians, is goodness, righteousness, and truth. Uh, you can't understand, much less be proficient in every type of technology that there is. I consider myself a pretty tech-savvy person. When something breaks technology-wise on campus, usually I get a call or a text going, this doesn't work, can you fix it? And most of the time I can not always can I, have you tried restarting it? Uh, someone was talking about the country the other day. He said, have you tried restarting the country and rebooting it and see if it works? I haven't let's pull the plug. Okay, uh, anyway, uh, but uh, it, it is constantly moving. I am shocked every time my child actually shows me something I didn't know with my own cell phone. Uh, I had my daughter show me something. Did you know you could do this? And I went, no, I had no clue you could do that. How do you do that? And she went, here you go. Do, 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 and it's set up now. And I went, huh? And I consider myself tech savvy. I can do a ton. Uh, and I didn't know how to do that. And, and they learn at such a fast pace. Uh, uh, Nate's very uh, technological savvy on different things. He can figure those things out very quickly and stuff. Um, uh, music recitals and things like that. Oftentimes I'll have him run the video equipment back there or the, helping me with the sound booth or something and he picks it up like that. Okay. And, and you're going, um, so can your kids outsmart you? Probably. Okay. And it probably won't even take them long to do it. And now I'm not saying they do or will or those type things, but we've got to prove and we've got to test in all goodness righteousness, and truth. So we can teach our children to walk in light through the leadership of the Holy Spirit, to have Him guide their lives as well. Don't they need the Holy Spirit more than they need anything else? 
We've got to show them that. We've got to walk in it ourselves, and then we've got to teach them what it looks like to do that as well. There may be times as a parent when you know the Holy Spirit is not giving you peace about something, and you may not quite understand why he didn't give you peace about it, and and, and you just don't have that, so uh, you say no. And then they ask, why? And you say, I just don't have a good feeling about it. Is that an acceptable answer? Absolutely it is. Especially if you're a mom in the room, God's given you an intuition that husbands don't have uh, and that dads don't, don't seem to utilize as much and, and listen to those things. Don't ignore them. I had uh, Olivia ask me to, to download an app and she has to get permissions for any apps that she gets on her phone and, uh, and, and she, was, she asked if she could get it and uh, I looked it up and I went, no. You can't. And she asked me another time, and I said, no, you can't. And she asked me why, and I didn't have a good answer the first time. I had a good answer the second time uh, on it. And uh, it was just, you know, you don't need it, number one. Secondly, here's what I'm reading, how it's used, and how this could be a damage to you, and I want to protect you in this. And so we're not going to do this particular app. Nothing particularly wrong with the app on things. I don't know that she would use it wrongly, but I don't want to find out either. Okay. Uh, and it's just those things. There have been other things that we've said yes to and other things that we've said no to, but there's a discernment that you as a parent has that your brain should not be developing still okay, uh, on things that hopefully is settled and discerning that can look and see. So, so we must prove these things. Uh, and so not only good, but also righteous uh, here. We don't want to quench the Holy Spirit. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, quench not the Holy Spirit, uh, quench not the Spirit, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. Uh, it says in verse uh, 22 uh, there that we are to not quench that voice in our lives that would protect our, our children. So the Bible tells us that a spiritual Christian will be discerning in all areas of life which it, of course, will include social media. Now, here's what we've done. We've scared you tonight, okay, uh, on that. And I haven't got through half of this lesson uh, on things. I'll have to finish it up next week. We'll have week three and week nine coming up on it, all right? Uh, So we won't go that long. I don't want to drag it out that long, but I do want to cover it thoroughly. This is a danger that we must look out for. I'm not saying in and of itself it's evil how we use it, maybe. Can it be used for righteousness and good? Yes, it can. And so how do we do that? We'll look at those concepts as we go forward in this and as we look more into it. Now, if I've scared you to where you say, I've got to go check my phone or I've got to go check my child's phone, then do it, okay? If the Holy Spirit's placed that on your heart, then go do it. If we all need to take an account of how much we're spending online, Uh, I didn't say money there, by the way. We do that too. Uh, But how much time we're spending there, maybe we need to take an account of that. And if you decide, I'm going to get off social media for the week, don't announce that to the world. Just do it, okay? Uh, Just disappear uh, online. I'm fasting for the next week. And then you're going to look at how many people like that comment uh, of what you did. So just do it, okay, Uh, on that. I I think it will help you. I I will tell you this, the depression levels and things like that that social media is supposed to bring up, that's supposed to uplift in things, the amount of people depressed by it doesn't, you know, so if you say, I'm never doing that, you're right. If you say, I'm going to do that with discernment, you're right. But you make that decision for you and your family uh, on those things. And we'll look much more at it the next coming weeks. Okay? Have we thoroughly scared you to death? I hope so, uh, at least to the point that it makes us take account of it. All right, let's stand uh, and we'll be dismissed tonight. I appreciate you so much for being here. I hope that you'll come back for parts two and three and whatever else there are. If you've got to go out of town, they're on our YouTube page. Like and subscribe. No, okay. uh, I'm not going to do that uh, uh, on those things. Uh, but I hope you will look at it, view it, and uh, have it be hopefully a blessing to you, okay? Brother Bono, will you close some prayer, please, sir?